YouTube squad, semen retention gang, spiritual family, agents, bots, human beings. What's going on? All right, I'm back, back in my secret spot. It's not actually that secret. I've told some people about this, but um, it's a, uh, a local secret. Um, place where I come take all my clothes off and let the sun shine in the areas where the sun don't shine if you catch my drift so this is a very important practice to me obviously you probably noticed a lot of my videos I'm out here um, butt ass uh, in the sun and look man this has been a priority of mine for a long time a lot of people think I'm crazy that's just fine they can think whatever they want because over the course of the last 10 years, same people that think I'm crazy have watched me age backwards. They've watched me just looking better and younger all the time. And some people, it actually upsets them. I mean, I've told people my age and had them spit their drink out, literally. Literally had that happen. I mean, people swear I'm in my early 20s. I'm 37. The sun. My prioritizing of the sun and my prioritizing of my diet has everything to do with that and I can't say enough about it and the thing is I've never worn sunscreen I've never worn sunglasses and I've said this before and I'll say it again sunscreen and sunglasses are an abomination I mean sunglasses are cool they can look cool whatever be a cool guy and wear sunglasses but like look it's not how we evolved it's not natural it's not normal it's not normal to be outside and all of this beautiful full spectrum light and then be blocking your eyes from it. As if all of our ancestors didn't evolve outside working in the sun without sunscreen or sunglasses for thousands, millions, maybe even billions of years. I don't know. Life in general. I mean, if humans need sunscreen, why don't the cows need it? Why aren't, why aren't cows and sheep and you know antelope and anything, why aren't they getting sunburns? You know, you ever think about that? Maybe they use common sense. Have you ever noticed too how dogs love to go lay in the sun, right? And then if they get too hot, what do they do? They go in the shade. It's just common sense. You know, animals are supposed to be in the sun unless you're an animal that lives underground or underwater, which we're not. We're above ground animals. We're supposed to be in the sun, all right? So enough about the sun. That's not really the point of the video. I actually have a topic in mind and I wanted to go over a few of the main points, the main things that I think are going to help you stay on a long streak of semen retention and experience the fruits of that and, and all the transformations that, that occur within and without you when, you when you stick to it. So I'm currently about eight and a half months in on a streak. Um, for me, that's a pretty huge deal. I don't really think about the time so much. Um, I just say that to, to qualify. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing this uh, and that's how long I've been doing this for. But um, the benefits are still increasing for me. But also uh, the reason I'm making this video is because the difficulty of it has recently increased. So I had a period where it was kind of easy. It was I was so busy with so many other things. And so I was relieved. I was relieved to be celibate and to not be thinking about sex all the time. It was like a breath of fresh air for me, man. Cause my whole life has been kind of consumed by that. So to just have a break from that for a while was like, oh, what a relief of all this energy for all this other stuff now. But now that little grace period is definitely over. The honeymoon period is over. Um, my libido is, uh, out of control lately. I'm just going to level with you guys. You know, I'm still on retention. I have not relapsed, but every single night, every single night, I have very, very intense, very seductive, very sexual dreams. And every single night I am very close to the point of releasing. And I wake up right at that point and I refrain from doing it. Sometimes in the dream, even I get close to it in the dream. And in the dream, I tell whoever's involved, Hey, I'm, I don't do this anymore. I've got to stop, you know? So even my subconscious mind has caught on to what we're doing here and will stop something in the middle of the process. Um, and that's generally how it unfolds in the dream is like, all of a sudden my genitals are in somebody and, uh, 
I'm enjoying it and uh, we get to that point and then I realize, oh, wait a second. No, no, no. It's very important that I cultivate this energy and not release it. I don't want to wake up to a puddle and then feel like, oh, man. So every night I've been going to bed and I've been having to pray uh, basically like and not and not just pray to God, but but almost just affirm to myself, hey, uh, don't release tonight, you know, like keep it in, wake up feeling good that you didn't do that. You know, uh, it's almost like this little like pep talk I give myself before I go to sleep because it's been like that. And then, of course, having these images in my mind, these ideas uh, being that I'm back in the gym full force, I'm working full force, you know, all of this stuff. I'm very healthy right now. So everything's firing, you know, all cylinders are firing right now to full capacity. And that includes having a very strong libido and the female attraction part is getting to be uh, pretty overwhelming. It feels like I, it's almost like there isn't a female I interact with that, that doesn't uh, feel attracted to me and, and I can just sense it energetically. And sometimes they, they just tell me straight up. And so the temptation is growing. Um, I'm experiencing a lot of thoughts of like, well, maybe, maybe just once or that kind of, that kind of thinking. So being that I have a history of addiction with other substances, I know that thought process. Well, I recognize those thoughts. I recognize that, well, maybe just once idea is I, I understand that it generally doesn't work like that. It's like have, have one potato chip, you know, like good luck with that. So that's just me. Some people can have a potato chip. I don't understand what planet they're from. Not that's, that's not how I operate. So I am abstaining, I'm continuing to abstain. So let me get to the point before I ramble on for 30 minutes. The things that are really helping me get through this difficult patch uh, of this are, I'm going to, I'm going to list them kind of in order of importance, but they're not necessarily in order. First of all, a strong prayer life, um, because really this is a spiritual practice. I can't do this without a strong connection to spirit. See, it's my body that wants this physical pleasure. My spirit exists, you know, in, in another dimension, let's say. My, I, I'm part of the spirit realm. My spirit isn't bound to time. My body will pass. My body will decay. My spirit will not, right? So we are spirits and bodies. Our spiritual nature isn't interested in sex. Our spiritual nature is interested in connection with, with other spirits in, in experiencing, you know, intimate connection and love and things like this, but not sensual pleasure, not temporary uh, gratification of the flesh. The spirit has no interest in that. So if I'm not connected to my spirit, if I'm not connected to God, I absolutely do not have the strength to do this. I would have given in many times this week alone, right? So I, I've got to have that first and foremost. So uh, on a more tangible, practical level, outside of prayer life and a connection to God, cold showers, man. I can't say enough about cold showers. I think that a lot of what we're cultivating, you know, the sexual life force energy is very, it's like hot, it's heat. We, we say when an animal's horny, they're in heat, right? So there's heat associated with this. So there's something about a cold shower, also water being uh, feminine in nature. And we're increasing our masculine fire energy in this cultivation practice. And we're using that to accomplish the things we need to accomplish in life. But if this gets out of balance, you know, we might feel a little crazy. We might feel some type of way. We might be a little bit too horny or too anxious or, or aggressive or something. So cold showers, man. Uh, ice baths. After this, I'm about to go take an ice bath and those do wonders for me. I can't say enough good things, right? And ice, what's really amazing about ice, ice baths, cold showers, all of that, is it forces your body to get into a, a better breathing pattern, a more efficient breathing pattern, which brings me to the next thing that helps is conscious breathing, breath work, all right? So cold forces you into that, or you can voluntarily breathe consciously the way you would have to in an ice bath. So the breathing is, is really, I think, the, the thing that's powerful. But the cold, the water, all of those things kind of temper this intense masculinity that we're cultivating. So in addition to that, the next thing I'll list, this is extremely important for me, is physical exercise. It's, it's a, a daily non-negotiable for me. Uh, not, it's not every day that I go push my body to the limit. 
I'm careful about that. I used to do that and I ended up injured. So I don't always push myself to the limit. I push myself to the limit a few times a week maybe. But then I always give myself days where I train and leave some gas in the tank. That's how I, that's how I put it. Leave a little bit of gas in the tank. Some days I want to run it to empty. Right? I want to push myself. Some days leave some gas in the tank. But there are no days off. There are no days that I do not move my body and exercise my body. That is a foundational, non-negotiable daily thing. The other thing is grounding to the earth, getting barefoot on the earth, touching a tree, going to the woods, taking a walk in nature. Anything that's going to connect you to the natural world that you live in, Mother Earth being a feminine entity, having all this masculine energy in excess, getting grounded and connected to Mother Earth, getting grounded and connected to a body of water, going swimming. All of these things are going to help temper that energy and bring you into a state of balance and make this easier to, to maintain, right? So on top of that, I would say also, this would be the last thing I'll say. There's so many things I could say, but it's the last thing I'm going to say is really prioritize your self-care. And, and that could look different person to person. Right. But that for me looks like uh, going to bed early. Right. If somebody wants me to come out, um, I have the self-respect to say no, because I want to go to bed early and get a solid eight night, uh, eight hours of sleep every night if I can. And then be up early and be in the gym early and getting things accomplished. You know, for me, that's self-care, taking care of my living space, keeping things clean, taking care of my hygiene, keeping myself clean, you know, doing uh, the occasional fast, you know, taking care of my gut, my gut health, you know. Um, all of these, all of these aspects of being a human, uh, making sure that I'm not overworked. Like I just got offered a fourth job and I'm turning it down as much as I want the extra money. Um, I'm not willing to sacrifice the, like what I'm doing right now, like having some me time. Um, that's very important. So prioritize that, make time for yourself, do things that you enjoy, make sure that you're resting self-care in general, you know? So if you get all these things in play, man, if you're praying, if you're moving, you're hydrating, you're getting in connection with nature, you're breathing consciously, and you're prioritizing self-care, then that's going to help you get through, you know, the flat lines and the opposite of that, which I'm going through right now, where it's just like, I'm just so freaking lit up, you know, I'm, I'm like a lion in heat out in the Sahara right now, man. Um, <laughs> So it's a vibe, but we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it and we're going to be stronger on the other end. So, all right, with that, peace out, you guys.